Dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today it's a very interesting topic. We already talked about quercetine and uh, now we're talk uh, talking about uh, his brother, uh, physetine. Why is it his brother? Look at it. You see, this is physetine and this is, of course, you guessed it's quercetine. You see, they are very similar, but even they're similar, they have different um, properties. Uh, physetine is a naturally occurring a flavonoid that you can find in many, uh, f many food. Uh, the richest source is strawberry. Uh, it has 160 micrograms per gram of strawberry. Uh, then apple, then persimmon and all other things are not as rich. And uh, I will tell you in few uh, words about uh, the use of physetine in different diseases, uh, but mostly we will focus on their uh, tumors, on their oncological diseases, as this channel is more oncological. So let's get started. First of all, uh, we have a systematic review, meaning that is they gathered uh, a lot of uh, different studies. Uh, these were preclinical studies on animals investigating their action of physetine in bone and cartilage. And they found out that physetine can improve uh, their health of bones uh, in osteoporosis and health of joints in osteoarthritis. If you are interested in learning more, there is a link here and you can find it by the name of the article and their author. Let's go further. Treatment of neurological diseases. We know that physetine may help in many neurological diseases as uh, this is their senolytic, meaning it's anti-aging agent. Yeah, so uh, we know that in, for example, elderly, um, there are a lot of uh, cells that already uh, did their function, uh, lived their life, and they are not functional anymore. And normally they must kill themselves. They must um, start the mechanism of apoptosis in um, destroying themselves and then they will give the food for other younger cells but um, it doesn't occur and these cells they accumulate and they take space and in such people uh, it causes the aging processes for example it can cause decreased immunity increased uh, risks of cancer it may cause some neurological problems like alzheimer's disease like dementia, like schizophrenia, like Parkinson's disease. Uh, and uh, physetine may help uh, those people, for example, to decrease their aging processes, for example, to improve immunity, to, uh, it can help in Alzheimer's disease, in vascular dementia, in uh, schizophrenia, in Huntington's disease, in Parkinson's disease, uh, in strokes and trauma of uh, neural system of brain. If you want to know more, please uh, see this article. By the way, there is an interesting um, phase two trial on uh, real patients. These are elderly patients uh, who are receiving uh, physetine and they are going to see if it will increase, improve their inflammation, insulin resistance and uh, uh, osteoporosis. And uh, they plan to finish this study in uh, summer of 2024. Afterwards, there be, will be some results published. For now, we must just wait. And physetine may help with these cells that are accumulated in, uh, for example, elderly in COVID, because accumulation of these cells is uh, associated with worse outcomes with more risks for these patients. So it's another clinical trial, and we will wait for the results. And now let's talk about uh, the tumors, about cancer, how physetine may help. We know that cancer is a very prevalent disease. It kills a lot of people every day. And uh, we have uh, several options to treat cancer, like surgery, like radiation therapy, like uh, chemotherapy, like uh, target immune therapy. But still, our results is not always very good because still um, most of patients, uh, they won't be healed. That's why, of course, we are searching for new treatment methods and uh, natural remedies. They um, attract a lot of attention nowadays. We already know about many other substances like curcumin, like green tea, uh, resveratrol, berberine, 
uh, and others, and uh, quercetin, of course, and they are quite well studied. But pisetin is not as popular, but nowadays it's studied a lot. And even, as you see, it's already studied in clinical trials on real patients. In order for cancer to progress, uh, it has to have uh, several processes. First, it must grow, it must divide, it must uh, have an opportunity to metastasize, to invade the tissues around, to invade blood vessels, and it must survive um, against apoptosis, meaning apoptosis is self-killing of the cells, and also inflammation. First of all, inflammation, uh, if it's acute, it's a good protective mechanism of our immune system, uh, meaning it will stop the spread of infection of or tumor, and then it will kill it. But if the inflammation does not improve, it may progress into chronic inflammation, and uh, this is already a problem, because it's not effective anymore, and it leads to many consequences, like, for example, tumor occurrence and progression. And cancer patients, they always have uh, their systemic inflammation in all their body. That's why they may have problems with appetite, for example, they may have increase in their temperature. Uh, in their tests, you may see increased uh, erythrocyte uh, sedimentation rate, ESR, uh, or CRP, C-reactive protein. These all show their increased inflammation. And also, the tumors are very dependent on production of blood vessels. And on all these things, we try to, in, uh, to act with our uh, oncological drugs. For example, we can uh, target angiogenesis, production of blood vessels, to feed the tumor with um, targeted drugs like bevacizumab or ramicirumab, and we can uh, act on cell cycle and proliferation with chemo drugs. And here we know that physitin may really help. For example, inflammation. If the patient has inflammation or bad appetite, we can give them omega-3, and also physitin may improve the inflammation. This is a very interesting uh, clinical trial on real patients with colorectal cancer. It's uh, double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled, 37 patients. Uh, some got physitin, 100 mg per day. It's about 625 grams of strawberry a day, or just few capsules of physitin. And others got placebo capsules. And they saw that uh, their patients who got physitin, they got the dramatically decreased inflammation markers, like interleukin-8, C-reactive protein, and also their markers of metastasis of tumor. So, inflammation metastasis is very important for tumor. That's why physitin is a nice potential helper for cancer patients. Here you can see how many important processes of, of uh, uh, cancer progression physitin can influence. If you watch this table, look, inflammation. This is what I told you before, the clinical trial. There are references here. These are all different studies. Apoptosis, self-killing of the cancer cells. It will increase the self-killing by activating the genes of self-killing self -killing, and deactivating the genes that protect the tumor from self-killing. Next, autophagy. That was um, investigated in pancreatic cancer cells or oral cancer cells, for example. Production of blood vessels. Cell cycle. And all these things are signal signaling uh, pathways that are very important for cancer progression. And we uh, use very expensive targeted therapy drugs to um, influence these pathways. And physitin is just cheap one. And it really can potentially help these patients. But we need, of course, we need investigations of the pa patients. Look, there are uh, pot the potentially beneficial effects of physitin were observed in liver cancer, kidney cancer, prostate, pancreatic, colon, bladder, lung, breast, oral cancer, and also on lymphoma and many other types of cancers. Brain cancer also. Just watch that. Many effects in prostate cancer, in kidney, liver, colon, gastric, everything, bile duct, leukemia. If you want to see more, please read the article. I will leave the links below. And it has some synergism on anti-cancer drugs. Here you can see another table, but in general, I will tell you. For example, 
Paclitaxel is the drug that is uh, of natural origin. It's uh, actually produced from the tree. It, and uh, physetine can really improve the effects of uh, this paclitaxel, which is very highly used in many types of cancers. Or it can improve the effects of irinotecan and oxaliplatin in colon cancer. These are two main drugs of treatment, the basic drugs that are most important for these patients. And uh, if they already stop to work, if the tumor uh, learns how to resist them, then we don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities to help these patients. But uh, physitin can restore the sensitivity of the cells to these drugs. And these are just few examples. There are a lot that are impossible to tell in one small video. Now, few words about bioavailability, because of course it's important. We can take some supplement, but it will be never absorbed. Um, Physetin is not very highly water-soluble. I would say poorly water-soluble. That uh, that's why it's poorly absorbed in the guts, uh, like quercetin. But if you eat it with some food, and especially some fatty food, uh, actually it may help to absorb. But you must always uh, systematically take it, so you can reach some effective concentrations in your blood, if you want to get any potential effect. By the way, there are new forms, like nanoparticles or liposomal forms, but of course uh, it's uh, much more expensive. So, as you can see, uh, this um, flavonoid is very interesting, very promising, and uh, very highly investigations, uh, investigated nowadays. That's why I am sure that uh, the scientist, uh, scientists will find uh, how to uh, use it in many diseases in future. But for now, the informa information on the real uh, patients is uh, quite deficient. Dear friends, I hope it was interesting for you. I hope it was beneficial for someone. Uh, my name is Dr. Igor, and I wish you good luck, good health, God bless you. Bye-bye.